I'm wild. Yum yum. Daddy. <laughs> Hey, Monique, nice balls. Hey, you want some balls? Cute as raw meat gets, baby. More flavor, more comfort, more fun, more family, more joy, more color, and a little bit more spice. This is good mood comfort food. Honestly, this is one of my favorite weeknight recipes that my kids gobble up. It is my homemade SpaghettiOs with pesto turkey meatballs that are actually in my cookbook. The recipe for the SpaghettiOs is on my website so you can make it ASAP, but this is such a comforting, nutritious take on the SpaghettiOs from the can that we all grew up on. It has a homemade roasted veggie sauce packed with three different types of veggies, a whole head of garlic in here. It's so creamy and it comes together in no time at all, so let's do it up and make my homemade SpaghettiOs. Today for our homemade SpaghettiOs, we are making a roasted veggie sauce. And I just thought it would be fun to include a little more nutrition in the sauce. Now traditionally, SpaghettiOs are just made with like a tomato cream sauce, but I thought, why not add a little red bell pepper, some onion, and even today, I'm adding zucchini because I'm wild. No, just, just kidding, I had it in my fridge, so. If you happen to have a little extra zucchini in your fridge, you can add it in too. So you're gonna give these a rough chop. Same with the zucchini. You can either cut it in half or just cut it into big pieces like this. Add these all to a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Got our onion in here too. I love when onion gets nice and roasty toasty in the oven. It releases that sweetness. You don't wanna cut these too thin because you don't want it to burn in the oven, so just be aware of that. You just wanna give it a nice rough chop. Okay, that's good to go. We're also gonna be roasting a whole head of garlic in the sauce, which just makes it extra delicious. So how to roast garlic in the oven is take a whole head, you're gonna cut off the top and expose the garlic clove, if I can do it. Okay, stick this in a piece of foil. You're gonna drizzle it with some olive oil. Nice and coated. You're just gonna wrap it up. And you can roast this right alongside your veggies for about 30 to 40 minutes until the garlic is nice and tender and beautifully roasted. We're also gonna toss our veggies with some olive oil. We've got some kosher salt and lots of black pepper because I love black pepper. Give this a toss with your hands until it's nice and coated. Spread it out in an even layer. And then we're gonna roast this in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. And while we're doing that, we're gonna make our meatballs. Now this recipe is traditionally vegetarian on my website, but I thought it would be fun to add my mini pesto turkey meatballs. This is from a recipe in my new cookbook that I'm very excited about. It's actually from this one, but we're gonna make these pesto turkey meatballs. They're so cute, so delicious, perfect for kids, and adds a little boost of extra protein to this recipe. Also, if you haven't picked up a copy of my cookbook yet, I'm gonna link it in the description below because I know you guys are just gonna love it. Tons of family-friendly recipes in here. Let's make the meatballs. All right, we're gonna use lean ground turkey for this. You could also use chicken. We've got an egg to help bring them all together. What makes these so delicious is the addition of basil pesto. Now, I do have a recipe for a homemade basil pesto in my cookbook, but store-bought basil pesto is just fine. You're gonna be using two tablespoons. Yummo, yum yums, daddy. <laughs> We've got a little bit of garlic powder. I'm just eyeball things at this point. Some Italian seasoning. Red pepper flakes for a little bit of heat. If you're making these for kids, you might wanna leave them out. Just depends on how your kids are when it comes to spice. Some panko breadcrumbs. These are my favorite for breadcrumbs. They also make a gluten-free version. So if you're gluten-free, you could absolutely use those. Got a little kosher salt. Bada bing, bada boom. And some black pepper. Rusty. <laughs> Aaron, you got any WD-40 or what? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get a little bit dirty with our hands using clean hands to form these. We're gonna make about teaspoonful, teaspoonful, 
sized meatballs. So you can use a teaspoon if you want, but I just grab it with my hands and you can roll them into balls. Now a tip when you're making meatballs, I've said this before in one of my other recipes, my herby chicken pita meatball recipe, but you always wanna have a bowl of water on the side because that's gonna really help you to make nice round meatballs and it helps prevent the meat from sticking to your hands. Put these all on a plate and then we'll cook them up. Veggies are done roasting and we are ready to blend up our veggie sauce. So we're gonna add all of these to a blender. I'm using my little handheld blender, which is one of my favorite things ever. I'm gonna link it in the description for you. I love roasted red bell pepper. It just adds this nice sweetness to any pasta sauce. It's also delicious in hummus, just so you know. Fun fact, this is our roasted garlic. Still a little bit hot, but you can see that the garlic is nice and roasty and toasty in there. So you're gonna squeeze this in. It's hot. If it's a little bit hot, you can use the foil. Should have waited till it cools, but I was I'm too ambitious, you know? I recently made this with some whipped feta, roasted garlic and whipped feta is incredible. So that gets all in there. Just make sure you don't add the skin into it. It's very easy to do. We don't wanna blend the garlic skin up in there. Okay, looks good. Blend this up with a little bit of this broth. If you wanted to keep the recipe vegetarian, you obviously wouldn't make the meatballs and then you just use a veggie broth. That looks really freaking good. Look at this, tons of veggies in here. All right, let's go cook our meatballs and make our SpaghettiOs. We are ready to cook our meatballs. We're gonna place our braiser over a medium high heat and get that nice and hot. Add in some olive oil. I love this braiser. It is one of my favorite pans that I own. I'm gonna link it in the description because it is just truly fantastic. Great for one pan meals like this one. Great. Just wanna make sure nothing sticks. You know what I mean, jelly bean? Hello, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> She's deep frying the meatballs. I literally saw someone on Instagram deep fry a stick of butter. Aren't these cute? They're, cute. They're as cute as raw meat gets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, if your pan isn't big enough, you may need to do these in batches. You'll just have to decide on what works best for you because you want to give them enough space. I have a pretty big brazier here, so. This is gonna turn out perfectly. We're gonna get the meatballs nice and golden brown on both sides, fully cooked all the way through. So if you're making this recipe, you can just add them at the very end or stir them into your spaghettios, whatever you wanna do. All right, these are getting nice and golden brown. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of a flip. Gently toss them here. Put your tongs underneath. You know what I love about mini meatballs? One, they're a lot quicker to cook, so you're not sitting there for 10 to 15 minutes. Even in the oven, they're a lot quicker to cook, and you could absolutely bake these. And two, they're just so freaking cute. Kids love them, adults love them. Who wouldn't want to eat mini meatball? Somebody on my vegan chocolate chip cookie recipe, which I will link this here, was like, where's the poultry? I was like, do you really want chicken in your cookie, sir? <laughs> These are good to go. So if you're nervous about it, you could absolutely use a meat thermometer. They should read about 160 degrees Fahrenheit to 165 degrees. We're gonna transfer them to a plate and then get our SpaghettiOs cooking. Big old plate of balls. <laughs> hey Monique, nice balls. Hey, you want some balls? Hey. <laughs> Immediately after you have cooked your meatballs, you can deglaze the pan a little bit. This isn't in the recipe at my website, but if you are making the meatballs, we're just using one pan. We're gonna deglaze it with just a little bit of broth. You could use wine too. Get that cooking off. Then we're just gonna add a little bit more olive oil. I love using tomato paste in my recipes because it just adds this nice brightness. And you cook it for one to two minutes in a little oil to really brighten up the flavors, release all of that tomato acidity, and get it nice and deep in color. As the tomato paste is cooking, we're gonna add in our seasonings. We've got a little oregano. I like to get my spices nice and toasted. And we've got some paprika. Italian seasoning. 
just a little bit. Stir that up with the tomato paste. Nice and cooked in there. Oh my God. It's releasing all of those spices, the flavors, toasting them. Wow, it smells incredible. Next up, we are adding in a little bit of heavy cream to this. We're gonna add in about one third cup. You could also use coconut milk if you prefer. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Look at that stunning color. Okay, next up, we're adding in a little bit of chicken broth, or you could use veggie broth, depending on if you're making a meatball version or not. What's really, really cool about this recipe is that the pasta cooks in the chicken broth, in this tomato cream mixture. So it makes it super easy. You don't have to cook it separately. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Finally, we've got this beautiful roasted veggie sauce that is gonna go straight in here. Stir it all in until it's nice and well combined. Infused with so much nutrition and your kids will never be able to tell, I promise. Looks good to me. We're gonna add in our pasta. So I'm using this pasta that looks exactly like SpaghettiOs. It is fantastic, but if you're not able to find it, then you could absolutely use any short pasta, such as an elbow macaroni noodle. But I did find this on Amazon, and I'll link it below. All right, let's add this in. Ooh, Ooh last one. We're gonna stir this in and bring it to a gentle simmer and then we're just gonna let the pasta cook down until it's nice and tender and has absorbed all of this liquid. So as you can see, the SpaghettiOs are simmering in the sauce. Now here's a thing that I like to do is I like to add a little bit of sugar and that's just to make them taste a little bit more like SpaghettiOs. So I don't know if you guys remember, but the SpaghettiO sauce is slightly sweet. So we're gonna add a little bit of sugar, only like a tablespoon. You could also use pure maple syrup if you prefer. This will just help it taste a little bit more like the real deal. Another important tip is to make sure that you are stirring frequently throughout because the pasta will stick to the bottom of the pan if you don't. These look amazing. And if you find that when you're cooking these, you need to add a little bit more liquid because the pasta is still a little too al dente, you can absolutely add that in and then just cook it down a little bit more. Next up, we're gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. This is totally optional, but I just love the flavor it gives these spaghettios. Stir that in, it's nice and creamy and melts into the sauce. Let's go plate these up. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some SpaghettiOs. All right, meatballs go on top. Just pop in a few in. Like I said, you could absolutely stir these in too, whatever you're feeling. Oh my God, how cute is this? I can't stop. All right, that feels good. Little basil because always fresh herbs just adds this nice freshness. <laughs> That's pretty. A little parm, saltiness. And you don't have to do this if you have kids, but if you're serving adults, a little pinch of red pepper flakes is absolutely my favorite. Oh my God, look how beautiful this is, you guys. So cozy, so nostalgic, so nutritious. They're nourishing, they're comforting, they're creamy and absolutely delicious. If you haven't made these yet, do so ASAP because everyone you know will gobble them up, including your kids. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call good mood food. Holy That's really, really good. Stop what you're doing, guys, and go buy my cookbook because those pesto meatballs alone, whoa. Make them as is, put them on top of the SpaghettiOs. You need them in your life.